This video is sponsored by DJ the Lazy Gamer and Crimson Manifesto. Hey guys, not gonna take long on an intro. Make sure you subscribe. I'm gonna show you a little stat bar on screen. A lot of you aren't, and you could be a big part in helping us get a big milestone on the channel. Also, it helps you get notifications, and we're gonna have another 1500 like gold to guarantee a part three and sooner. The day of the Saiyan's arrival is coming last, and as such, Goku's friends have gone ahead and wished him back to life. However, due to a miscalculation on King Kai's part, he is going to have to rush back down Snake Way to make it in time to help Gohan and the others. Nappa and Vegeta arrive and say hello just as they did in canon, this time noticing three powers instead of two in the Wastelands as they make their way there. The Z Fighters all still being in their separate training locations at the time of their arrival, so it is Piccolo, Krillin, Piccolo, and Gohan who meet the threat first. However, at their increased power, Ten Shinhan, Chaozu, and Yamcha all arrive much faster. Now trust me, I would like to make it that Piccolo's presence doesn't allow Nappa to plant the Cyberman as part of his street smarts just kinda kicks in and tells him that's bad news. However, I think if it were that simple, Piccolo, Gohan, and Krillin would have had similar inclinations to destroy the Bible before Nappa could do anything with it since all are intelligent characters. So everyone is still too confused and weirded out by the whole situation and the revelation of Piccolo's alien heritage to be practiced. However, Piccolo's addition does at least make it so the heroes outnumber the creatures equal to Raditz by exactly one. So the Saiyans recognizing Piccolo as the leader of Earth's forces challenge him to pit his six against their own as a bit of entertainment. That way the power imbalance would be made clear and he'd go ahead and willingly turn over the Dragon Balls in the face of despair. Recognizing the misunderstanding on the enemy's part and having already surmised that Goku will need more time to arrive, a dastardly plan sparks in the Namekian's mind as he telepathically tells everyone to play along with this little game and do their best to conserve their power and drag out the fights as long as possible. Wanting to set the tone, as he understands fully the brilliance of Piccolo's strategy, Piccolo steps up, insulting a Cyberman as a bargain bin Cabbage Patch Kid and telling one of them to come at him already. Incensed by the taunt, the monster pounces. However, since he is stronger than Tien's cannon power level, in fact, nearly twice as strong as the Cyberman itself, Piccolo effectively starts playing Bugs Bunny, zipping around the mountains and taunting the creature for as long as it would hold out, until it finally began to lose energy and tire, left to kneel and pant pitifully through its attempts to try and pursue the orphan ward. Seeing the Saiyans growing bored and that a full 10 minutes were bought in the small exchange, Piccolo goes ahead and orders his oldest duty to finish it off. Piccolo walks forward boredly, grumbling that he didn't even get a chance to show off any of his new moves to his seniors, as he appears a demon wave key blast in his palm and levels it at the exhausted Cyberman. Then the Saiyans suddenly smirk, and Piccolo recognizes the trap just as the Cyberman springs at Piccolo and tries to wrap him in a bear hug. However, by simply powering up, Piccolo blows the creature off him and reveals his ability to detonate without any harm to himself, though he does feel a chill run off his spine, as that kind of attack would have at the very least taken him out of the battle for sure. This in turn makes him warn his friends not to take the opponent lightly, citing their willingness to truly give their all in this, as that's how much they respected, or at least feared, the Saiyans. Vegeta, now in a good mood from the entertaining show and the backhanded praises, boasts that he likes that earth thing. He can tell he's got a real killer instinct. Plus, he's stronger than Raditz. Thus, he jokes that those of them who survive, he may consider allowing to be his servants. Under the impression that he's got a good grasp over the situation, Chaozu steps forward next, claiming he's got a good idea, while his Cyberman opponent steps forward confidently, since he can see the obvious height difference. However, as he tries to approach, for some reason he can't close the distance between himself and the Esper, no matter what he tries. Even his attempt to split his head and spit ass it results in the liquid being poured back on him, melting half his face off. This allows Shoutsu to sit back and hurl insults while he sweats only a small bit in exertion, leaving Nappa to curiously re-equip his scouter to read the shrimp's power level. Misled by the low number, he grows angry and orders the Cybermen not to play fair anymore as two others suddenly jump in with their brother, pushing against Chaozu's invisible force. The combined effort allows them to begin making ground, but at the cost of very obvious strain as they approach, bits of their bodies seem to break down under this mysterious force. Curious about this, Vegeta orders the final two to jump in, more so to see what will happen in actual anger, and this is finally too much for Chaozu, as the five creatures slowly close in despite the psychic strange infinity ability. However, as Tien cries out that he's coming to help, Chaozu laughs that this was all according to plan, and so, when the Cybermen get within reaching distance, he suddenly exerts himself hard enough for his nose to bleed, which not only causes the five creatures to fly back towards their masters, but also glow with the light of detonation Piccolo had revealed, as the kamikaze attack literally backfires at the Saiyans' faces. The heroes all being alive and well, save for Piccolo, begin cheering their slight victory, and have their hopes come crashing down as Vegeta's laugh joins them, as he simply blows the smoke caused by the eruption away to reveal himself fine, other than a few scuffs and burn marks, which he simply pats away, while Nappa has actually been knocked cleanly out cold, sitting curled up and calmly snoring at his own body is bruised and burned rather horribly, still a testament to the brute's resilience. Far more amused than he thought he'd be, Vegeta congratulates the Earthlings on overcoming the odds as far as they have even commending the wisdom and using the Cyberman. As if they'd used all six like that, they'd have surely killed Nappa, and at the very least landed a good hit on him. Scared by this revelation, the heroes take up defensive stances, all preparing to take one of the short sand together if he attacks. 
However, Vegeta simply makes the unconscious Nappa into a seat for himself, saying he's willing to allow the Earthlings a few extra hours in order for the traitorous Kakarot to arrive, since he was interested to see what kind of Saiyan comes from a planet with creatures like these. And so, the three hours of downtime that were bought with the blood of our heroes in canon are instead bought through their cohesion and sound strategy here. And they aren't stopping there. As Piccolo and Chaozu recharge, the group tensely begin to work out a strategy. With Piccolo having reason that by Vegeta's comment, they could reasonably assume he was well over 10 times the strength of Raditz, and thus an attack any weaker than that would be effective as Chaozu's sneaky move. And thus, a plan is formed with Gohan's controlled anger as his crux, since he is truly their strongest. However, as time passes, Nappa suddenly awakens enraged, and Vegeta is thankful, as the three hour mark was nearly hit and he'd become bored again. This in turn throws their plans out of whack, as heedless to Vegeta's orders, the bruised pride of Nappa sees him go for a bloodlusted rush towards our heroes. On the fly, Piccolo splits their forces in two, and though he'd be more confident working with the students on this, he asks Piccolo to join Yamcha and Chaozu in finishing off the brute, while Gohan, Tenshin, Han, Krillin, and he try to take the fight to the prince. Like a well-oiled machine, the group splits up perfectly, Nappa quickly finding himself surrounded like a wild animal, while Vegeta smirked to the four warriors who rushed him from the air with a rain of key blast, causing him to boast that he was trying to hold off slaughtering them to draw Kakarot out, as his much greater speed allows him to leave after images that get their hopes up. However, at this moment, having requipped his scouter in his board, a far off power level alerts him that this is likely unnecessary, and as such, he immediately releases an explosive wave to blow the gnats back, while barking at Nappa to hurry up and do away with his opponent before they end up overran. But with the damage from Chaozu's sneak attack, coupled with the combined force of Piccolo's team now exceeding his weakened power, the older Saiyan is still deaf to his prince's orders, swinging wildly and wasting energy on blasts which open him up to Dodon Rays, Wolf Fang Fist, and Piccolo's signature attack. Inspired by Gohan that he christened the Tsunami Slammer, where he coats himself in a dense aura and rams into the opponent, before manipulating the key that trails behind him to wash over them in a wave. However, the tables seem to turn when a bad call is made by Yamcha, as he tells Chaozu to teleconnectly grab hold of the Saiyan's tail to stun him, while he and Piccolo finish things off. As a hazy blue glow shimmers around and attempts to crush Nappa's tail, the Saiyan flinches slightly, a devious smirk splits his face, as he laughs that won't work on him, and roars a key blast from his mouth. The trio's eyes widen in fear, as even weakened, they can tell this will take them all out. However, Chaozu pushes through this fear grabbing his friends and telepathically telling him he's sorry as he throws him out of the range of the blast. Similarly, Piccolo's group are making use of Vegeta's lack of key sense for more run-and-gun tactics after having destroyed his scouter, attempting to cause him to waste energy to enact the final stage of their plan. Sadly, Tien loses focus as he can feel his best friend's key fade, even before Piccolo and Yamcha call out in horror. The Triclops nearly loses his head as his anger causes his key to flare as he attempts to snipe Nappa in revenge, nearly meeting the same fate if not for Piccolo sacrificing an arm to get him out of the way of Vegeta's key blast, roaring at him to focus that anger into the fight now and mourn later, something Tien takes to heart as he redoubles his efforts to make the right opening. Feeding off one of his mentor's anger, Piccolo tells Yamcha to keep Nappa busy, as he wants to get behind him for a plan. Having grown attached to the kid so similar to himself, Yamcha at first tells him to wait, but the orphan warrior refuses and rushes for it regardless, making Yamcha determined as he manifests a spirit ball and begins to pester Nappa with it, keeping his vision and attention locked down on him. Suddenly, Nappa bites into the key ball, dispersing and sending a blast that Yamcha only barely dodges, having it graze his side and burn him terribly. And while this takes the Desert Bandit out of the fight, it is not without merit, as Nappa again feels pressure on his tail. But when he raises an elbow to cave Piccolo's skull in, he suddenly feels a snap, and his eyes water in pain, as his tail had been yoinked out ruthlessly. Fueled by revenge, the Saiyan warrior swings wildly. However, he hits nothing but air, as Piccolo has already climbed up his back and wrapped the severed tail around his throat, turning it into a weapon to strangle the life out of him while using his legs to unleash all hell onto his spine, claiming that this was all for Mr. Chaozu. Unable to reach the boy on his back due to his yoked shoulders and seeing his vision darken, Nappa makes a last ditch effort to slam his back against the mountain and squish the orphan, but just before he can, he finally passes out, only for Piccolo's anger to cause him to continue yelling out and squeezing until a snap rings out around the wasteland and the brute's head hangs limply before he falls dead, an exhausted Piccolo falling with him. Vegeta sees this shameful end for a Saiyan, simultaneously feeling his respect for the scrappy human kid rise as he raises a hand to give his comrade a Saiyan warrior's farewell by doing away with his body and Piccolo's in the process with a key blast, only for the small bald earthling to zip in front of him and blind him with a solar flare, and then be knocked into the air by a sucker punch with every ounce of power to spare from Piccolo, already in the air as an awaiting Gohan, having been spending the entire time focusing his rage for a temporary boost, as he unleashes the strongest Masenko he'd ever mustered, while Tien from the ground 
Brown pours all his rage and a significant portion of his life force into a key coho, thus pincering Vegeta between the twin blasts. A massive smoke cloud kicks up from this awesome maneuver, while Tien drops to his knees, now completely out of key to continue fighting. Gohan continues blazing with power, however, and Krillin jumps the gun, cheering for his friend's success, only for Piccolo to remind them that Vegeta's key is still there. As if to prove this point, Vegeta flies up from the dust cloud and into the atmosphere and it takes only a second before Piccolo recognizes he must be looking for the moon. Assuming they're safe due to Piccolo's earlier destruction of it, the remaining fighters prepare to pursue Vegeta to finish him off, but feel fear as his power shrinks only a tad, just to reignite all the more monstrous. Vegeta crashes down to Earth as a great ape, and rocks the planet as he curses them for pulling this out of him, stating he'll just have to get his wish from the Namekian homeworld. Piccolo and everyone else fights off despair, as he sees the giant monster in artificial moon, and as Gohan surprisingly leaves the charge, pulling on the full breath of his rage, he attempts to keep the big monkey away from his friends. Teaming up with Piccolo, they give this everything they have, but it's clear it won't be enough, as all too suddenly, Krillin is targeted for revenge for hurting the prince's eyes, and winds up crushed as he tries to remove his massive tail. Even though Piccolo can sense that Goku is not far away at all, the stakes are still now higher than ever, so much so that he has to make a bet, and as he comes to this realization, he also sees another one. His youngest student's tail is regrown, and so he orders Gohan to look up at the Powerball as well. Now with another great ape in the field, Vegeta is shocked, as with Gohan's controlled rage and now the power of the Uzaro running through him, he is now nearly equal to the prince if not a little stronger due to his being less fatigued. And so Vegeta begins to keep his head above water only due to having his sanity still. The terrain also starts to take damage of crumple resulting in the vulnerable Yamcha and Piccolo being left out in the open and helpless to a rock slide. Noticing this, the enraged great ape Gohan seems to see through the haze of his transformation in order to fire a blast to destroy the rocks and protect his friends. But Piccolo's keener senses alert him to his hybrid student's miscalculation, and not wanting him to bear the weight of two lives of his friends in his frenzied state, he resolves to take responsibility as a master flying over to use his stretchy arms and move the downed fighters, and in turn, being hit fatally with the key blast. The sight of this makes Gohan rage all the harder, while Piccolo, barely conscious, can only look on helplessly, now losing a master and several friends, shedding tears for all they have lost on this day, and his frustration at failing, until a spiky-haired man with a symbol on his back lands in front of him. But that, my friends, is sadly where we'll be leaving this story off for right now. Before we sign out guys, I'm well aware this one is a lot shorter than we usually go. The first part was actually meant to be around this length, but it ended up going way longer because there was so much set up to that part. So with this one, I wanted to kind of end off on a bit of a cliffhanger. So next part, we'll be finishing up the Saiyan Saga and then seeing what we'll be doing after that. Even so, I really hope you guys have enjoyed this part and the last one since I've been having a lot of fun with this story. The Saiyan Saga is still one of my favorite parts of all of Dragon Ball and Piccolo is still one of my favorite kind of characters to play around with as just a filler character who really didn't get much to really do. He's got a really interesting backstory and his kind of streetwise kind of gang mentality kind of added to some really fun tactics and strategies the Z Fighters could come up with since someone around them would be saying like, hey, why don't we do this or hey, why don't we do that when we get faced with these stronger opponents. Also, might be a little bit too late to go ahead and pose this question, but I do want to ask you guys something. When all this is over and, you know, we get back to peacetime, who should Piccolo go to live with? Should it be Piccolo, his first master and someone who he really relates to on a very deep and fundamental level? Yamcha, who also has some very similar aspects to him, but can also kind of recognize the fact that he's human and probably needs some different kind of training and just kind of love to get reintroduced to society in some different ways. Or the Sone film, where if you kind of think about it, Piccolo could just be added in with them. I definitely have my own bias here. I know who I would like to write, but I do definitely want to hear where you guys' minds go on this subject. Next, I want to give a quick shout out to Val or Val Rusvia, since from them I commissioned the first official piece of artwork of Piccolo from this story and I'm hoping that won't be the last one we get of them. You can find their links in the description below as well as a way to get to Patreon which we'll be giving shout outs to next. Zach Haji, Enerberated, Daniel Smith, Coder SV3, Adrian Carr, Vegito Gaming 78, Steven Norton, Omar Cousin, Kareem Lavore, Elmore Jr., Jay Array, Infernate Beast 326, Dylan Wolf Dog 31, Drax, Shao P, Arcana of the Heart, Normandy 1998, Narku, Aaron Winters, Pizza 15X, Knuckles OX, Dominique, and and Crimson Manifesto. As always, thank you guys so much for directly supporting the channel and helping me to do all that I do here through getting new art and stuff like that and just everything that you enable me to do by just ensuring that we have income coming in from the videos. It really does mean the most and it really does help me to go above and beyond with these videos and make them to the kind of extent that you guys like them to be in. And don't forget you can always join their ranks and get a few exclusive perks if you go down to patreon.com and find yourself a tier that you think you'd fit well in. And if you can't do that, remember basic YouTube stuff is also very effective so just liking, comments, and 
subscribing and sharing with other friends is a good way to help me out. With that said though, be sure to take care of yourselves and the world around you and always go beyond plus ultra. And I'll see you guys next time.